it's Jane back with another video. If this is your first time ever seeing my face, please hit the subscribe button down below to join the G. If not, then hey girl, hey, let's straight to the video. As you guys know, today is Murder Mystery Monday. So today is the day where I talk about an interesting murder, in my opinion, story, and I do my makeup at the same time. Today we are going to be speaking about a man named Abraham Shakespeare. You guys probably have heard about him. This case is a very, very well-known case and has also led people to handle things different ways with especially the lottery ticket situations whenever somebody wins. I'll explain that later as the story goes on. Abraham Shakespeare was born in April 24th, 1966 in Florida. I honestly couldn't find too much about his early life. Um, What we did know about him was that in the sixth grade he dropped out school to work with his father in the fields is what they said but I figured out that his father was like a citrus picker so I guess he just picked citruses and obviously because he left in the sixth grade he was pretty illiterate he he could barely read and he could barely write he had grown up in Lake Wells Florida and had spent most of his time in like de juvenile delinquent homes oops I meant in homes he spent most of his time in homes for juvenile delinquents and somehow through his childhood and into his adulthood he gained a criminal record as well a very quite lengthy criminal record to be honest mostly for loitering driving without a license um sometimes he stole from people sometimes he got in fights and later in his life when he had kids it was for child support for child support he ended up going to prison twice and after he got out in 1995 he ended up living with his mother that's just so super sad to be honest that's so sad the jobs that shakespeare would do were like unloading chugs being a janitor just a lot of labor labor jobs anything that you need heavy lifting for or just long distance driving on november 15th 2006 shakespeare was 41 years old with only five dollars to his name in his wallet making about eight dollars an hour he had no car he had no driver's license and he had no credit card so he was basically just not very far up in the life chain and was just not making a lot of money and that's basically where he was in november now on on a trip for his job he was riding shotgun to a destination with another co-worker named michael Four. They were on an overnight food route to Miami. They had made a delivery in Lakeland and another delivery in Winter Haven. And then they had stopped at a town mini market in Foster Proof? Faster Proof? Frost Proof. Ford had got out the car and asked Shakespeare did he want anything from the mini mart? And Shakespeare took out his $5 and gave it to Ford and said, can you get me two quick picks? And two quick picks were two dollars so he gave him five dollars so and then ford came back in the car gave shakespeare his two quick picks and that was how he got the lucky numbers of six 12 13 34 42 and 52 and ended up winning winning 30 million dollars guys 30 million dollars after taxes and obviously being behind on child support the government took out their tax and the money for child support obviously that he owed and he ended up coming back with 17 million which is a crazy amount like anybody would be blessed to even get 1 million but he got 17 million now of course they had asked him if he wanted to get um, an annual payment of $1 million for 17 years. He declined and he decided to just get one whole lump sum of $17 million. Now, being a man of like, of having no money, having that amount of money, that abundance of money, you don't even know what to do with yourself. Like, I wouldn't even know what to do with myself. So there he was with just $17 million. What you gonna do? You gonna tell your friends, you gonna tell your family, you gonna take, of course, to take pictures. Like, that's what happens when you win $17 million or even a million dollars like what when the first thing well one of the first things he had done when he had gotten his million dollars he ended up putting a trust fund of one million dollars for his son to get when he was 18 years old so that already there you already got 
16 million dollars left but that's still a lot that could like really last you the rest of your life no lie and when he won he was 40 he was 41 years old when he won the lottery so dude you better invest that money and do what you gotta do so then after giving his son a million dollars in a trust fund he gave his stepfather a million dollars now he's down to fifteen thousand dollars then he gave his three stepsisters was it stepsisters or real sisters stepsisters he gave his three stepsisters two hundred and fifty thousand dollars a piece that's basically another million dollars 750 that's basically another million dollars right there so basically down to fourteen thousand dollars like dang so quick but i mean it's family but you gotta manage your money sir very much manage your money then he ended up paying a friend's mortgage what was which was about one hundred and eighty thousand dollars he paid off another person's mortgage that he doesn't even really know he doesn't even know the man's last name and the mortgage was like sixty thousand dollars like you just doing a whole bunch sir and then he paid off another man's mortgage which was another sixty thousand dollars to somebody way out of the neighborhood wasn't even in really his neighborhood i just feel like they were all taking advantage of him but let's just continue on this story makes me so mad to like hear about honestly so yeah he paid the man who lived out of the neighborhood who he had been knowing for years his mortgage as well yeah he ended up buying a house in lake wells florida for one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars that he had only seen once only been in once and then ended up renting it to tenants who he had only met once he gave his brother's son's best friends forty thousand dollars I don't know why. He gave his mother $12,000. Like, you're giving everybody else money, but you gave your mom $12,000. I feel like you could have gave your mother more, but maybe she wasn't really his life. I don't know. And then his uh, his blood sister, $10,000. And then he just wrote a whole bunch of cashier checks to friends. Like, why? And then he paid for a whole bunch of funerals. Like, I don't know. This story really, truly makes me <laughs> mad but i don't know i think just like people were just taking him for granted basically honestly in my opinion that's what i felt they were doing to him and he just didn't know how to say no now finally for abraham self he did splurge on himself which i feel rightfully so because you've been basically you haven't been able to get what you want in life so now that you have it why not why not but with consideration, don't just spend all your money. But anyway, he decides to get himself the F-150 pickup truck, a 2006 one. Then he got himself a 2007 BMW i something car, 750i, I'm sorry. And then he ended up buying himself a $1 million mansion, which is about 10 miles from his um old town. So not too far, but far enough where he can start almost a new life, which good for him something for him to um it's like a new change of scenery for him but still close enough for you to visit your family and your friends so why not now a few months after he had done all his purchases and giving people money his friend ford if you remember him from the beginning he decided to sue mr shakespeare and claim that shakespeare had stolen the ticket from him i feel like that was a really weird move on his part but he did it so Shakespeare was like, dang, bro, you salty like that? Yeah, Shakespeare, he is salty like that. So he wanted to sue him for the rest of the money that he had because it should have been split between the two of them. So he ended up taking Shakespeare to court and the court did side with Shakespeare, thankfully, because I believe it was Shakespeare's money also. But but then what's his face? Mr. Ford decided to appeal the appeal it and so he took he took shakespeare back to court it's like the process all over again so the last appeal hearing was in which was in may 2009 and shakespeare never appeared to this and honestly that's when people really started to realize that yo he's really missing why isn't he why isn't anybody seeing him and what's going on with Shakespeare like nobody has seen him in months so Shakespeare has disappeared off the planet and so has his money dun, dun, dun. so now February 2009 his family reports him missing now this is obviously before May before they didn't see him at the court case but they reported him missing, stating that they hadn't seen him since April the year before, which I feel like not, I feel like that's like, that's a long time to wait before reporting somebody missing, but I guess, I don't know, he was 
isolating himself. I don't really know what was the cause for that, for reporting so late after you thought somebody was missing. But the reason why they waited so long to report, actually, you'll figure it out before you'll figure it out later as i tell you the story but when i was first reading i'm like why did they wait so long and then i was like oh that makes sense so the family was pointing the investigators to a woman who went by the nickname Dee Dee, also known as diane moore she was 37 and living in shakespeare's house for some reason, which we will further find out as to why, but she was a 37 year old woman living with Shakespeare. And no, she was not his girlfriend of any sort. So of course, because Diane Moore is living with Shakespeare, her his family obviously goes straight to her to go and figure out where is Shakespeare or Abraham, whatever you want to call him. She's like, oh, he's gone to Jamaica. He's gone to Puerto Rico. He's gone just to get away from everybody who's trying to use him for his money. Okay, Diane. She told, she ended up telling a newspaper because now everything was coming to light that he just wanted to disappear away from the people that he had known because he had felt like everybody was just using him for his his assets his money and what he could do for them and that just made me really sad like because he had nothing before and i just felt from the jump that everybody was using him not only did she tell the newspaper that he just wanted to get away she told the newspaper that she helped him get away like helped him disappear what does that really mean and she let them know like that's what he wanted because he was falling behind in child support and that he just like i said wanted to get away from everybody that was using him for money like he just needed to get away from it all and that's just sad that she used that against him i'm sure that might be possibly true but she just made it seem like dang it was that bad he needed to get away from everybody that he'd known and go on a private island with all his money and she said that he intentionally did not want to be found and that he didn't care what it took to make him disappear so that people couldn't find him and that she would know because she was his declared financial advisor mm -mm -mm. she crazy she is crazy how why are you his financial anyway whatever continuing on because that just made me so mad when i read that part i was like what why would he get in a financial advisor but then again he was illiterate and he needed somebody there to walk him through and she seemed like a good person to be able to walk him through everything when spending money as much as he was spending his money now as his financial advisor he gave her control of all of his assets of all of his money and with his money she ended up buying herself a hummer a chevy and i think a nice home a chevy corvette sorry i should specify chevy corvette a ninety thousand dollar hummer like what people be tripping and stupid they be tripping and dumb they be tripping and just downright stupid but whatever the way that Dee Dee had met and finagled her way into shakespeare's life was that he met his realtor who had bought who had helped him buy his million dollar house. And she told his realtor like, oh, I would love to write a book about Mr. Shakespeare and his story of becoming a millionaire. Like what? So of course the realtor obliged and was able to get a meeting between the both of them. And that is how the relationship between Dee Dee and Shakespeare arose. And between the time that Dee Dee met Shakespeare in less than a year, barely a year, Shakespeare ended up missing. So here are a few things that she bought with Shakespeare's money, which I just think is super sad. And just like, I don't know, she's just a, like a terrible person in my opinion, but. So she bought, during his disappearance, she bought his house for $400,000 less than what he had originally paid for his house. So she bought his house, so his house was now in her name. She became the manager 
of his company that they had both started together but with his money and her brains so now she is the primary owner of that company she took over his affairs and the debts that other people had owned him make meaning that the the money that people had owed him now owed her instead and that itself added up to about six hundred thousand dollars because eight people owed him a lot of money and shaper was not keen on getting his money back he didn't really care too much i don't think to be honest like he knew he was being used but he didn't really voice his concerns about it too much so and then she also in between that whole disappearance of mr shakespeare she also got divorced from her husband of seven teen years i don't know why he didn't divorce her because she needed or maybe he did divorce her i don't know who divorced who but he dodged the bullet because he could have got killed to be honest she probably would have killed him to get the money from the divorce but i wonder if, i don't know don't you when you get divorced isn't that ruin your credit and all that extra stuff and she had a lot of money so why didn't he get any because i'm sure they didn't sign a prenup but i don't know so now as people realize that they just haven't seen Mr. Shakespeare in a long time. She went to three different newspapers who were obviously running the, the stories of the disappearance of this $17 million lottery winner who went who has gone missing and told him that she can get an interview for them. Like he's not missing. She knows where they are, where he is. She, he just doesn't want to be found. But if they want an interview, I can definitely get you an interview with you, with him. But that never happened. She ended up going to Shakespeare's mother and telling him the same thing. Like, he's alive. Like, why is everybody just acting so crazy? Like, I can get you an interview with him too. That never happened. And she also kept using his cell phone to portray that he was alive and was texting people off of his cell phone and them know that he's okay and what he's up to. Not really knowing that Shakespeare is illiterate. She did not know Shakespeare was illiterate, which I don't blame him for not telling her. That's a kind of embarrassing thing to tell somebody that you don't know how to really read or write but her not knowing that gave it a big red flag as to like the texts not even really sounding like shakespeare and the fact that he didn't even really know how to text so like you blew yourself off there lady like and when people would text shakespeare text shakespeare back and ask him questions that she didn't really know the answer to she just didn't respond like she just left them on red like what but i mean if we, she didn't know the answer to them so what could she say she would blow her cover now i'm not 100 percent sure what happened on the day of shakespeare's death but what i do know was at Dee Dee's house he ended up being shot twice and not that i didn't do my research on what happened but like i literally couldn't find a conclusive like report of what may have happened and Dee Dee herself she has a lot of stories herself about what happened and she keeps changing her story every now and then so i'm not 100 percent sure what occurred but what we do know is that he was shot twice and he died on april 6 2009 she ended up burying him in the in her backyard and filling the hole that she had buried him in with a concrete slab so she buried him in her backyard bro like what yeah she's just i don't know i have no words for her and then after police found his body at her 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 like at her house in her backyard she had so many stories like it was a drug deal gone bad oh it was her 14 year old son and then she said she, it was she killed him in defense like which one is it because at this point you're just not credible at this point lady you're just really not <laughs> so during the time that Dee, Dee was trying to make it seem like Shakespeare was alive she was in fact trying to find somebody to pay them to take the blame for killing Shakespeare like that's even more evidence around you like she's just I don't know she was not thinking straight because she was like oh I got all the money in the world like anybody would do anything for the money no sweetheart some of us have morals um and she also offered to pay somebody to dig up shakespeare's body and move it to a different location because obviously that didn't look good for her that she, he was in her yard and obviously you know now it definitely didn't look good for her and during investigation Dee Dee tried to pay shakespeare's child's mother two hundred thousand dollars to say that she saw shakespeare like are you dumb that just incriminates you like even more because these people are looking for justice 
for their son, their cousin, their brother, and you think that if you pay them, they'll lie for you, the person who could have potentially killed their son? Like, are you stupid? I don't know. I didn't get that part of it. I was really hiking concerned and like, I don't know. I was mad reading that part, honestly, but. She also paid, tried to pay one of um, Shakespeare's relative to give his mother um, a gift, a birthday card implying that it was from Shakespeare and she wanted to pay him $5,000 to do that. Like, I don't know. I think this lady really thought money held weight <laughs> over family and I, but obviously it didn't. And then investigators investigated Moore's background just a little bit more and found out that she had criminal history for being fraudulent. She had um, been on one year probation for trying um, <laughs> some bullshit. I don't even know how to say this. Like, how do I say this? She was basically behind on her car payments and so she had a friend park her car in a garage and she had them she had this man tie her up so she could run out in the middle of the highway and say like hey i've been kidnapped raped and carjacked so just for her car to not be taken and when they found out they just gave her one year probation and she was out i think they failed her on that one i think she should have been in there a little bit longer but yeah so she pled no contest to it and then she ended up just getting and if nobody knows what no contest means because i didn't know what it meant either it basically means that you didn't say that you're guilty but you didn't say you were innocent so to me that means that you're guilty because why would you not say you're innocent if you're innocent like what kind of dumb on december 10th 2012 three years after the murder of Shakespeare. Dee Dee was found guilty of murder. She was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole and was also sentenced to an extra 25 years, additional 25 years, for possessing a gun in, a, in the course of a violent felony. So she was basically just never getting out of jail. So hey guys, this is the end of the story time. Basically, Dee Dee did maintain her innocence till this day. She says she didn't do it. We all know she did. So hey guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this look. It was a fun, cute, short, not too crazy look. Anybody can do it. And I hope you guys enjoyed today's Murder Mystery Monday. Like, comment, rate, subscribe guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye guys.